So let's talk about drawings. In this first module, I'm going to go through a drawing with you in video form, and then next week we'll get into the textbook. So the first thing I need you to do is go into Blackboard. The part we're going to be doing is in class three. If you remember this part here that you made and turned in, we're going to take the part you made and make a drawing similar to the one you're looking at on the screen. So find out where your part is saved and then we'll head over to SOLIDWORKS. What we want to do in SOLIDWORKS is go up to the sheet of paper here for a new document. You'll go to templates and then double click drawing or click and hit OK. A dialog will pop up. It will give you a ton of options. For right now, we want to do size B, ANSI, landscape. Okay? I'm going to have you do something else here. Uncheck display sheet format. So what this does is get rid of the title block for this class. Next week, we'll get into doing all the title block stuff. But for now, we're just going to focus on the part and the dimensions and all the annotations. So when I hit OK, it's going to give us a blank canvas to work. What we want to do here is add a part to our blank canvas. So the way we do it is we'll go to drawing here in the drawing tab. Right? Model view brings us to this. It might have popped up when you opened up the drawing. You want to browse and then this is where you need to know where your part is saved. So I'm going to select how I saved it. I saved it as assignment two part. You should have saved it as assignment two something something your name. Okay. So I double click. It's going to open up and it's just going to be a rectangle, right? It's not going to too much to work with. The first thing you want to do is go over to the left in the model view taskbar and hit preview. So this is going to show you what it's going to drop when you click the, the left mouse button. So when we click, it's going to drop that view on the paper. And if you move the mouse around without clicking, it'll show you all the additional views you can get. So we want a front view, which we just did, and a right view. So I'm just going to left click again. That gives us our right, and then I'll right click or hit escape to finish up the views. That's how we add views to a drawing. Now you can continue adding views, say we wanted an isometric view. I'll go to model view, select the same part, okay? Then come right here to isometric, and I can place an isometric view. Another thing I can do is go to display style, and I can open this up a little bit. I could do a wireframe, right? I can do shaded with edges. You can do any of the views you can do in a part. You can also do in a drawing. So in this, let's do a wireframe and I'll put it right there. Okay. The last thing I'll show you about the views, if you click this drawing view one, okay, you can change its scale. So I have it selected. I'm going to scroll down here to scale and I can use a custom scale. So it's got some suggestions. If you do one to two, it'll get smaller. If I go to two to one, it'll get way bigger. And then you can also pin whatever you want. So if one and a half to one was the best, you can do that, hit enter, and it'll punch it in. But for right now, we'll use the standard one to one scale. Okay, I click OK, close dialog, and we're good to go on the view. The next thing we're gonna do is go over to the annotation tab right here and we're going to add in i'm going to zoom in a little bit the center marks for this slot so i go up here to center mark i go to the dialog over here and i want slot ends select that i'm going to click the feature and it'll add in those center marks and i'll do okay right there the next thing we want to do is add dimensions so the way we do that is going by going to model items right here click and we're going to click features that we want to add dimensions to so i'll just click on the part and it'll want our outside dimensions if i click on this hole it'll add all the dimensions for that okay click on the slot same idea one dimension we're missing is the distance from this hole to this hole the way i get it so by selecting the second one, it'll give us that distance that we used in our linear pattern. So I'm going to click the green check OK over here. If you notice, these are ISO dimensions. They're going to look a lot different than the drawing we have that we went off for the part. 
the way we change this in the drawing, and the book will go with through this next week, is up here, go to Options. Right? You'll go to the Document Properties tab, Overall Drafting Standard, select ANSI. You can go over here to Dimensions, open it up, and make sure all your dimensions are also in ANSI. So this is irritating, but you need to go through each one sometimes. Make sure all your dimensions are ANSI, okay? And that's going to make the leaders and the dimension lines correct for our purposes. So if you notice, all our dimensions are ASME, ANSI approved. The one thing we're missing is the depth of one of these holes. In order to show that, we have to see the actual hole, okay? So the way we're going to do that is with a broken out section. So I'm going to break out a little section on this right view to show that hole in section while keeping the right view. So the way I do that, I'll go to drawing. I'm going to go to broken out section. And I'm going to draw a spline. So we have to imagine you're looking at the part from the right side. So from this way, right, you're looking this way. I want to cut the part right here. Okay. So with the spline, you're just going to click and it'll give you a curving line. You can make it a little bit too big. You want to make sure it connects in the end. And then you want to give it a depth. So we got to do a little bit of math here. We want this hole because this is the one with the dimension applied to it if you followed the instructions in making this part. So half an inch, inch, one inch, one inch, half an inch. This will be three and a half inches deep. I'll punch that in, 3.5. I can hit preview. It'll show us this hole. This yellow line is where the section plane is. So click the green check. Now, when I go to annotation model items, I can click on this feature. It'll add that dimension in. Okay. So now let's clean up these dimensions. The first thing I'll do is move this one up. And I'll go ahead and move it over. Now, I'm going to zoom in. I want a gap with this extension line. If you notice, this extension line has a gap. That's correct. There should be one here and here. The way I accomplish that is by selecting this dimension. I'm going to grab this blue dot, and I'm going to move it up. It can be a little bit tricky to do. All right, move that one up. I'm going to go ahead and move this one up. You're looking at about right there. So all the extension lines have gaps that separates it from the actual part. I can look around here. I don't think I have the same problem anywhere else on the drawing, so we're all good there. Now we want to add the number of instances. So for example, this depth, this applies four times on the drawing. One, two, three, four holes. So I want to make this four times. I want to make this uh, whole diameter four times. I want to make this one inch three times because it's one, two, three spaces. The way I do that, I'll click on the dimension. Over here in the dialog has a lot of different things you could do with the dimension. For right now, I just want to add four capital X space in front of this dim. I'm going to click OK, and it adds that four times right there. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other dimensions. On this 0.38, I'll do four capital X space. Also on this dimension, I want to show three decimal places, so it shows 0.375. I'll go to Tolerance Precision right here and make it 0.123. That indicates that it's three decimal places. So click the OK. I'll go to this one inch. I'll make this three times because it applies three places on the drawings, three capital X space. Next, I'm going to untangle the dimensions and just make them look a little bit better. So we don't want this extension line crossing this dimension line if it doesn't have to. So I'm just going to move the smaller dimensions inside of the larger dimensions. When I can, I'm going to line dimensions up. Okay, I'll center this dimension with the part. Move this out a little bit. Exactly where they are isn't super critical right now. So I'll move this in. So I'm going to center it on its dimension line. So I don't want this up here. 
Don't want it down here. I want it kind of right in the middle, okay? Scooch this one in. Also, I want this one kind of in the middle. Move it down a little bit. If I want to move the arrows in, I select this little blue dot and just pull it down, okay? Still not quite enough room there, so I'm going to move this one just like that. It'll kick out automatically. Next, I'll move this leader out. I'll have it coming out of the corner of the part so it doesn't interfere with any of these extension lines. I'm going to move this over to the right so I can pull this down. Actually, I'll move it up a little bit. Then I'll move this one over to the left. Okay. The last thing I'll do, I'm going to move this three inches to this right view. The way I do it, I'm going to select it, hold down shift, hold down uh, the left mouse button, and drag it over here. So if you remember from the print reading class, if we can, we always want to place dimensions in between views. So this three inches should be between these views. It makes the drawing easier to read. I'm going to grab this blue dot for the extension line, just move these over so there's a space. I accidentally grab the view. It can be a little tricky to get the right thing selected. Again, just like an assembly, if you zoom in, it can make life a little bit easier. So I'm just floating this around until I get the correct icon cursor. There we go. And move that over. Okay. So the last thing, we'll just put a note with a name in it. So the way to add a note is right up here in the annotation tab. Note. And you can just put your name on top. Hit enter or hit X in this. Click OK and hit escape so it doesn't make any more notes. Okay. So that's all I want for this. To submit, you will save as, save this as a PDF, right? Just like this, and this is what you'll turn in on Blackboard. So I'll hit save, it'll open up the PDF. Be sure to save the PDF, put your name and the file name, but this should be what, what you turn in should look like this. So that's it for this class. We won't be using the textbook this week. You're more than welcome to go in the textbook and get started or use it for reference. Just remember to, when you submit this assignment, it must be a PDF. I cannot open a drawing file by itself. So whenever you have a drawing, you also have to have a part with it in the same folder, similar to an assembly. So it's not that I don't want to, it's that if you send me a SolidWorks drawing file, I cannot open it to grade it, okay? So it's got to be a PDF.